You are marvelous, God. Yahweh, we worship you. Yahweh, we glorify you. Oh, Yahweh, we glorify you. Oh, Yahweh, we glorify you. Oh, my God, who is worthy? Who is worthy? Who is worthy? You are worthy of all the praise except the praise. Oh, God, let every other name fade away this morning. Let every other name fade away this morning. I am Matanabaya. Oh, Kotaloboa. Yatalabaya. Oh, God, be glorified in this place this morning. We surrender this space to you, oh, God. Dwell in this place, oh, God. Make here your dwelling place, oh, God. Make here your dwelling place. Make our hearts your dwelling place, oh, God. Do a new thing in this space, we ask, oh, God. We are excited. Expecting a move of God in this place this morning. Oh God, shift this atmosphere. Oh God, shift this atmosphere. Let your will be done in this place on earth as it is in heaven. Oh my Your will, not our will. Your will, not our will. Your will, your word, your way. Oh God, your will, your word, your way. Oh God, this morning, oh God, we we make room for you, oh God, to take over this space. Do a new thing in this space this morning. Do a new thing today. Do a new thing today. Do something new, oh God. My Lana Shia Talabaya. Oh Kororo Siania. We serve the gods who makes waters and rivers in desolate places. Aren't you doing a new thing in this place this morning? Oh God. We are expecting something new, oh God. My Lama Shia Talabaya. Oh God. We are expecting miracles, signs, and wonders. We are expecting transformation because when you are in a space, we cannot stay the same. When you are in the space, something must happen. When you are in the space, oh God, we must experience your glory. We must experience something supernatural because we serve a God who is supernatural. You do a new thing every time, and we are expecting something this morning. It is no different, oh God. My God, we are expecting something. It is no different, my God, this morning. Jesus, let your power reign in this place. Let your spirit go throughout this space. Let it touch every person, oh God. Every person online, every person in person, oh God. Touch us. One touch from you, oh God, can change our situation. One touch from you, oh God, can heal us. One touch from you, oh God, can deliver us. One touch from you, oh God, can build our faith. One touch from you, oh God, and the impossible can happen. You are the God of the suddenly. Suddenly, suddenly. Suddenly, you can change the situation, oh Matalabi. Suddenly, breakthrough comes. Suddenly, breakthrough breaks forth. Suddenly, ah Matalabi. My God, you are the same God who raised from the dead. You are the same God. You are the same God. Yesterday, today, forevermore, you do not change. You are the God who is, who is, and is to come. Ancient of days, Adonai, we worship you, our Lord and our Master. Great works is your name. Great works, oh God, stems from your hand, your mighty hand. I don't know if someone's expecting or waiting for something, but we serve a God who is all-powerful, who is self-sufficient, all-knowing, who can do the impossible unto him who is able. He can do it. If there is something that you are waiting, something that you are desiring from God, he can do it. He is able, he is more than able to do it, oh God. Father God, open the heavens this morning. 
open the heavens this morning. Let us worship. Let us praise. Let us petition underneath an open heaven this morning, oh God. My God. Let your request be known to God this morning. Ask God. The word says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open. The word says you don't receive because you do not ask, but ask God this morning. Because we have the ear of the Father this morning. We are under an open heaven this morning. That means our praises will go up and reach the heavens. Our worship will go up and will reach the heavens. That means we are backed by the heavens this morning in our worship, in our word. That means the presence of God is in this place this morning. My God. So don't take this place for granted. Don't take this space for granted. Don't take this time for granted. The presence of God, he's here. Can you not feel the presence of God? He is here, oh God. Spirit of God, just minister to each and every one here, oh Lord. Dwell here. Make our hearts your dwelling place this morning, oh God. Dwell here, dwell here, dwell here, dwell here, dwell here, dwell here, dwell in us, 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 Atalabaya, Hokotororoa, feel the space of God. Jonathan, do you know the song? Feel the room. Let's ask him to fill this room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need you, Lord, to fill this room. Fill this room. Oh, fill this room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So this morning we're reading from Deuteronomy 34 to 10. If any of you are driven out to the farthest parts under heaven, from there the Lord your God will gather you, and from there he will bring you. Then the Lord your God will bring you to the land which your fathers possess, and you shall possess it. He will prosper you and multiply you more than your fathers. Amen. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. Also the Lord your God will put all of these curses on your enemies and on those who hate you, who persecuted you. And you will again obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments which I command you today. The Lord your God will make you abound in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your lands for good. For the Lord your God will again rejoice over you for good as he, is, he rejoiced over your fathers. If you obey the voice of the Lord 
your God to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in the book of the law. And if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Amen. We receive that this morning. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're so happy to be in the house one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are so glad uh, that the Lord blesses us. Hallelujah. That his hand is on us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship that great name this morning. The only name that can save us. The only name that can deliver us. Hallelujah. The only name that is worthy of all glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we know that name today? Do we know that name? Can we shout that name today? Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. No other name above your name. Hallelujah. We worship that great name, Jesus, today. Hallelujah. So worship with us. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and sing with us as we honor your name, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, let's clap our hands. Yeah, yeah. Come on, clap your hands. So we sing, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on and help us sing, oh, 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 oh. Come on, we're doing this together. One more time, we sing, oh, 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 yeah. One more time, we sing, oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh, sing we will. We will praise the name of Jesus. We will praise. We will praise the name of Jesus. We will praise the name of Jesus. That great name. One more time. Sing we will. We will praise We praise you, Jesus. Jesus. We will praise. We will we will, we will praise the name of that Jesus. great name. That great name. Yeah. So we sing, you alone are exalted. Yeah. And your name be lifted above all the earth, above all heavens. And no one can rival your worth. So we will rise when darkness falls to lift your name above all other thrones. Shine your light, shine through us. Sing, we will praise. We will praise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The name of we Jesus. will praise. We will praise the name. Oh, of Jesus. we will. We will praise the name. Yeah, of it's Jesus. that great name. That great Oh, we will praise. We will praise. We come to praise you. We will. We will praise the name of Jesus. We will praise. We will praise the name of Jesus. That great name. That great name. One more time, we sing. Oh, 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 come on, church. I need you to shout it loud. Oh, we sing. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, we will sing. Oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. You're worthy of our praise. We sing. Oh, 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 oh. sing, sing. You alone are exalted. Your name be lifted. Your name be lifted above all the earth. Above heaven. Above all heaven. And no one can rival your no worth. No one can rival your worth. Oh, we will rise. We will rise. When darkness falls. Darkness falls. To lift your to name. Lift your name above all We other sing, world. shine your light. Shine your light. Shine through us. Shine through us. Yeah. 
we come to praise you. We come to worship you. We will praise the name of Jesus. We will praise the name of Jesus. Oh, it's that great and mighty name. We will praise the name of Jesus. Come on, one more time. Sing, you alone are exalted. It's your name that's lifted. We lift you above heaven. There is no one that can rival your word. We will rise when darkness falls. It's to lift your name. Sing, shine your light, shine, your light. shine through us, and, and we will pray. Come on, shout it out, church. We will praise you. We make this vow to praise your name. It's that great name. Oh, we will praise. We will praise you, Lord. We will praise the name of Jesus. We will praise, we will praise the name of Jesus. that great name. That great name. Oh. So we cast down our crowns and humble ourselves. We bow down just to honor you. We cast down our crowns and humble ourselves. We bow down just to honor you, say, yeah. Cast down our we crowns, humble, our, humble ourselves. We come to bow. We bow down just to honor we you. We will cast down our crowns down our and crowns, humble, ourselves. humble ourselves. We bow. We bow down just to honor say, you. We cast down our crowns. Sing it again. We you. cast down our cast crowns down our and humble crowns. ourselves. We come to bow. We bow We've come to bow to before the you. King, yeah. Cast down our and crowns. humble ourselves. Humble ourselves. We, bow we bow down. Just come on, how many clap you. your head? Come to honor the King. We come to honor the King. He's worthy of all of the honor. Worthy of all the glory. Come on, so we're just gonna lift up the highest praise. Sing hallelujah. 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 Say we honor you. We honor Say hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We honor you. We honor Say you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 We've come to honor you. Honor Say hallelujah. 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 We are. Come on, help we us sing. Say hallelujah. 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 Say we honor you. Say hallelujah. 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 Say we honor you. Say we honor you. We honor you. We honor you. We come to honor you. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you, Jesus. Say we honor. We cast every crown. We lay it before you, Jesus. And we honor you. We give you our life, Jesus. We give you our souls. We honor you. We honor. Come on, let's lift it up. Say, we honor you. We honor. We honor you. We honor you. In our hearts, oh God. We honor you. In our minds, oh God. We honor you. Say, we honor you. We honor. Yeah, and we bow down just 
to honor you hallelujah we bow down just to honor your name we bow down just to worship at your feet jesus for you have been our god uh, you have been our way maker you have been our provider oh and we worship you today god uh, we honor your name jesus we honor your name uh, hallelujah we honor your name uh, Hallelujah. In whatever way that you know how, let's just honor his name. We honor you, Jesus, for being our savior, for being our keeper. Hallelujah. You didn't just save us, but you sustain us. You keep us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we honor your great and mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just with your own voice. Let's just honor the Lord. We said we honor you, but let's say I honor you. With everything that I have, I will honor you. Everything that you've given us, we will honor you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You have been so gracious, oh God. so good oh God mm -hmm. the heavens are telling telling the earth how great you are and we are responding to your love the oceans are rising rising and falling at your word oh, we are responding to your love my god how great you are how great how great you are come on we're just here to lift up the king of kings we're here to lift up the lord of lords my god how great, how great, how great you are. Oh, yeah. When we look back over our lives, we can sing, my God. My God, how great you are. You are so great. rising and falling at your word oh and we are responding to your love my god how great you are how great
Just take a moment and think about the greatness of our God, of how he's kept you, how he's kept your mind in perfect peace. Hallelujah. Oh, how you continue to keep us day by day. My God, how great you are. My God, how great you are. Church, sing it out from your hearts. You are great in this place, God, and we exalt your name above every other name. No other name but the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your own worship in this place. You are great, God. You are great and amazing. Nobody compares to you, Lord. Nothing above you, Jesus. How great you are. How great and amazing is our King. And amazing is our Savior. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Can we just thank Him for being great? Thank you for your greatness, God. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are great, God. You are great. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Praise the Lord. We welcome you to the Ram Church Toronto, where real people experience a real God and lead to real life change. If you are visiting us for the first time online, we welcome you to scan the QR code on your screen so that you can fill out a connect card and we can stay in touch with you. And if you are with us in person for the first time, uh, I welcome you and one of our friendly CSWs will be around to greet you and share connect card. Is there anyone that is here for the first time? Well, we welcome you all. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, and we are here to give you this morning's announcements. Morning, everyone. Morning. All right. So 
I just want to let everybody know that life groups are still going on and registrations are still open to anyone who's still interested for our life groups. Life groups are running through May, which are prayer, health and fitness, business and finance. This week, health and fitness will be running Monday at 6.30 p.m. and the business and finance will be Thursday at 8 p.m. Those person, these people, persons in person here, <laughs> You may scan the QR code located in the lobby if you're still looking to join. And those online, you can scan the QR code that is located on your screen. Please check your emails for updates and changes throughout the week, just in case. Amen. Can someone say round two? Round <laughs> so as you know, we are celebrating our second year church anniversary in less than a month. So in May... May 3rd to the 5th, we will be celebrating our church anniversary. I think that's uh, something to give God thanks for. Thank you. So we just want to remind everyone that service on May the 3rd is going to be starting at 7 p.m. We will be having an evening of worship with a special guest speaker from Ramp, Texas, um, Overseer Evan Risher. So please be sure to be here. You won't want to miss that. And then on the Saturday, we'll be having a community fun day. And so we welcome you to invite your friends, family, neighbors, anybody. This is a free event for the community. It will be taking place here starting at 12. 12 p.m. There will be no evening worship service. So please come out on that day. And then on May the 5th, Sunday, we will be having our anniversary service at 10 a.m. Again, with Overseer Risher as our guest preacher. Um, and then we will also be having dinner. So you won't want to miss that for sure. <laughs> so please mark your calendars and stay tuned for more details. Okay. Does anybody remember what pastor's message was last week? What are we supposed to do with lemons? You plant the seeds. That's right. You plant the seeds. So we just want to let everybody know that we have a financial planning session, which is going to be coming up in April. Um, it'll be on Saturday, April 20th. So for anyone who is interested, please see Vanessa after service and she will give you more of the details in regards to it um do we have any children here today no children here today okay well on that note i'd like to encourage everybody to get up greet your neighbors welcome everybody to the church here today we're gonna have a good day you know pastor always has a great message Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks for He has given Jesus Christ, His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. You all know this song. 
to the Holy One. Give thanks. Why? For he has given Jesus Christ his son. And now, and now, let the weak, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I'm rich. Say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord, because of what? The Lord has done for us. And now, and now, let the bound say, I'm free. And let the, that's right, say, and it's because of what the Lord has done. Because of what the Lord has done for us. For us, let's give thanks. Give thanks. One more time and say, and now. And now, let the weak, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor, let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done. The Lord has done for us. And now, and let the bound say, I am free. Let the bound say, I am free. And let the sick say, I am healed. Let the sick say, I am healed. Because of what the Lord has done. Because of what the Lord has done for us. For give thanks, give thanks. Can we just give thanks just for a few moments? Just for what he has done. Even though you're bound, we declare that we're free. Even though we're sick, we declare that we're healed. Even though we declare, we know that we might be poor, we decree that we are rich. And so, Lord, we thank you for what you have done. It's in Jesus' name. Get your Bibles. We're going to go to the book of Haggai. Haggai chapter 1. There is the word of the Lord for us today. I, I, I decided that I want to preach from the ground today because I want to take a bit more of a teaching, uh, teaching mode today. So that means you need to get your, your paper and pen or your, your smartphone and just follow along with me today. Uh, we're going to continue our series, Secure the Bag. Somebody say, Secure the Bag. Secure. Talking about finances. And so there's a, a lot of people missing today. I got five texts this morning that said people were going to be away. And so um, I, I, I hope that they're able to catch this online because I believe that this is uh, an important, um, important session in our Secure the Bag financial series. And so I, I want to share uh, a message uh, with you that I believe is from the heart of God and it's also from my heart. If you have Haggai chapter 1, say, I have the word. If you have it, let's stand as we honor the reading of God's holy word. Beginning at verse 2, thus says the Lord of hosts, saying, This people says, the time has not come that the Lord's house should be built. Then the word of the Lord came to Haggai, the prophet, saying, It is time. Is it time for you to dwell in your paneled houses and the temple lay in ruins? Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You've sown much and you bring in little. You eat, but you do not have enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe yourself, but no one is warm. He who earns wages earns wages, but puts them in a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple that I may take pleasure in it. And be glorified, says the Lord. For you look for much, but indeed it came to little. And when you brought it home, it blew away. Why, says the Lord of hosts? Because my house is in ruins while every one of you runs his own house therefore 
The heavens above you withhold dew, and the earth withholds its fruit. For I called for a drought on the land, and the mountains, and on the grain, and the new wine and oil, on whatever the ground brings, brings forth, on men and livestock, and all that labors, and all that labors of your hands. Listen, I, I want to I speak to you this morning, I want to teach you this morning uh, from this subject. It comes up twice in our reading this morning. I, I want you to look at somebody and tell them, consider your ways. Consider your ways. You got you to gotta really think about this. You can be seated. Consider your ways. And so uh, the book of Haggai is a, what, uh, what we call a post-exile prophet. He was a prophet that was called after Israel endured the 70 years of exile and bondage uh, based uh, from their uh, Babylonian captors. It was after uh, the, the, the captivity was satisfied that God finally released them back to the land of their inheritance. And so God raised up this prophet, among others, to, to, to give prophetic word and prophetic direction to the people of God as they would come back into their land and rebuild their lives. Really, not just build the city, but build their lives. Because for the last generation, two generations, they were nomadic. They had nowhere to live. They were in captivity. They were in, in discomfort. But, but God raises up this prophet to give prophetic declaration as to how they are supposed to put the building blocks together and how to reestablish the foundation of that which was once broken. And so God raised up Haggai to speak to uh, a generation. And some theologians call Haggai a minor prophet. And, and the reason why he may be deemed to be a minor prophet is, is not because what he had to say wasn't significant. It's not that what he has to say wasn't important. Uh, but he's a minor prophet because... Uh, his writing, uh, as opposed to some of the other prophets in his day, was significantly less. Haggai wrote two chapters. And so I don't want you to miss this, though. Because he may be a minor prophet, Haggai carries a major message. Listen, I don't want us to think that because something is not long, it's not strong. Uh, be, because I, I, I want to let somebody know today that we think that in, 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 order for us to have, uh, in order for us to have a powerful experience with God, in order for us to, uh, in order for us, to, our lives to be changed, I want you to understand that God can do some of the most significant work in our lives in a short time rather than doing it in a long time. Some of us are expecting this great, grandiose, big thing, but God is saying that uh, sometimes I'm not speaking to you in an earthquake. Sometimes I'm not speaking to you in a fire. Sometimes I'm speaking to you in a still, small voice in a way that you have to lean your ear in to hear it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so God raised up this prophet Haggai in the time where they went to rebuild their lives. And, and uh, these people had the excitement of going into a new season and coming into a new place and uh, going back to the lands that they were able to, uh, to till for themselves and plant and harvest. Uh, but uh, uh, Haggai begins to write about, about 20 years or so after they returned from exile. And, and, and so they began to realize that after a while, they were not getting the results that they thought they were, they were supposed to be getting by that time. They, they, were, they were planting and they were uh, tilling and working, but uh, at this stage in their life, they thought that they would have been further ahead. In fact, is there anybody's testimony in your life that you've been working for so long and you thought that your bank balance probably would have reflected that a little bit more? I mean, all, all of the hard work that you've been putting in, the late nights, hard hours, and sacrifices, you thought that by now you would have had some more assets under your belt. You thought that the debt would have been paid down a little longer. And this is a little further. And this is where they were. They were 20 years after exile, working, working, and working. But the Bible says, hear this, they were taking their wages and putting it in pockets with holes. Isn't that something isn't that something? They were working hard, but some kind of way, everything that they worked for, when they put their hand in their pocket, they couldn't locate it. 
See, I don't, I don't know about you, but there's some seasons in my life. I, I, I make a lot of money, but somehow I don't know where that money goes. Look at my bank account. I said, what happened to all that money that I made last paycheck? Where, where, where did it go? It went to what, what bill did I have to pay this week? You know, what obligation did I have this week? Or, or which restaurant did I go to this week? And, 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 so, and so, so it was in the generation of Israel coming back after the exile, so it is for many of us today. Some of us, we work hard, and what we have left over is not a reflection of the efforts that we have been putting in. And so Haggai begins to speak to that in a very intense and a very uh, direct way. And so I, I want to share with you a few points. I want you to take out some note, uh, a notepad or take out your, your, uh, your smart device and just follow along with me. Uh, because the reason why some of us, we continue to, uh, uh, to have holes in our pockets even after we work very hard is uh, a few reasons. This is not exhaustive, but I want to give you some of these things that, that Haggai and the scriptures really teach us about. And the first thing is the reason why we have holes in our pocket is because of our limited thinking. Number one, our limited thinking. Uh, the Bible says in Romans chapter 7, verse 25, that it's with the mind that we serve the law of Christ. In other words, our mind then becomes one of the greatest, and, uh, one of the, one of the greatest frontiers of the battle of, of, the, with, of the enemy. What the enemy wants to do is cause our minds uh, and our thinking to think on the wrong things. Uh, if you were in Bible study on Wednesday night, and man, did we have a good Bible study, didn't we? We, we? we talked about whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, to think on these things. And so we learned that we have the ability, we have the capacity uh, as uh, men and women who were made in the image of God, is we have the capacity to manage our own thinking. And, and so uh, when we have a limited thinking, uh, we, we oftentimes, what we do is when we limit our thinking, we limit the ability for God to move in our life. We limit the ability for God to do what, uh, what he wants to do. Why? Because our expectation is of what we want him to do, right? So when we lower our expectation, we lower our experience with God. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, he says, Now to him who is able to do what? Somebody talk to me. To do exceeding and above, uh, abundantly above what? All that we ask or think. And, and so then, uh, if God is able to do more than what we think, that means what he is able to do is actually contingent on, upon our ability to ask and think. And so... Uh, Everything that God wants to do in our lives is really starts in our ability to perceive it. Right? Does that make sense? I Isaiah says, behold, I do a new thing, right? Yet shall ye not know it. In other words, God could be wanting to do a, a new thing. In fact, he can be doing a new thing. But because of our limited thinking, we're not even seeing what God is doing right? And, and so one of the things that keeps holes in our pockets is our limited thinking because the truth of the matter is some of us think that oh, what we have is all we'll have or what we have seen is all that we'll ever experience in our lives, right? And, and, we, and we relegate our future uh, to the experience of our past. I want to let somebody know today that what God wants to do in your life is going to be greater than what you've ever seen, what you've ever thought of, what you've ever experienced, uh, but you just have to put your mind there. See, that's why, that's why exposure, exposure is an important thing. Exposure is an important thing. That's why you can't, just, you can't just hang around with people who are just like you, think like you, have the same things as you. You need to be exposed to the next level because what that does, that opens up your thinking to what is possible. Now, let me tell you something. When I, was, uh, uh, when I was in my late 20s, I finally, you know, uh, what I thought anyway, broke through and got, you know, that Bay Street banker job. And I was down on Bay Street wearing a suit every week. Every, and, you know, at that time, I wasn't really making, you know, a whole lot much money before then. But uh, I, I finally got that job. And, you know, I didn't have much, much money in my pocket. Much, I didn't have much saved. But I finally got to rub shoulders with some of these people. And 
in a time where I thought that we were in this financial crisis, I'm down on Bay Street with these bankers and these lawyers, and I thought and I saw that there is absolutely no lack in our economy in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but because where I was, all I saw was limitation. But when I got into this environment, that I saw that more is possible, my thinking began to shift. I begin to think I begin to think that there's more to life than this. There's more to existing than this. There's more that I can have than this. And, and so one of the reasons why we keep putting holes in our pockets is because we're thinking that all we'll have is this. And so what we end up doing is we end up putting our money in the same place, doing the things that we've always done, because we don't ever think that if we put if we put things in place that we can ever have more. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, uh, verse 23, he says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And and so I have to ask you a question this morning, Ramp Church, is who do you think that you are? Who do you think that you are? Who do you think that you are? You you, You have to be convinced of who you are, that you are the head and not the tail, that you are above only and never beneath. You're the lender and not the borrower. But if you continue to think like a victim, listen, you will always be one. But I want to talk to some people today that say, I'm not always going to be a victim. One day I will be a victor. I'm, oh, I'm, not, I'm going to be an overcomer. I'm going to get through this. I'm going to get beyond this. Why? Because I can think my way out of it. And says, so he says that uh, what a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And so I read this book coming out of university. It was written by this man named Samuel Beckford. He says this. I want you to take note of this. He says, in life, we only do what we think that we can do and nothing more than that. In life, we we do what we think think that we can do, nothing more than that. There's a a poem that I I read uh, when I was a kid in school. It's the man that thinks he can. Has anybody ever heard of that, that poem? The man that, I don't remember it all right now, but he, he, says, he says, the man that thinks he, he, he will, he will, and the man that thinks he won't, he won't. I can't remember how it goes, but is it the, 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 the crux of the poem really talks about our ability to live in our own life based on how we think about who we are. And so today, my prayer is that as we go through uh, what God's intention is for us, that we would change the way that we think. Change the way that we think about who we are, change the way we think about who our God is, and change the way we think about his intention for our life. Number two, the reason why we have holes in our pockets is misunderstanding our purpose. Misunderstanding our purpose. See, a a tool can never be effective, right, if we are not using it in the way that it was intended to. See, this week in my office, I was putting up, you know, something on my, uh, on my wall, putting up uh, my degree on my wall, uh, and uh, I, I was trying to uh, take these, these small nails and, and, and uh, put them in so I can hang my, my, uh, my degree, and uh, I, I couldn't find a hammer, right? I couldn't find a hammer. I was looking around, and lazy me just opened up the drawer in my, my, uh, my filing cabinet, and you know what I found? I, I, found, a, I found a stapler. You know what I did with that stapler? I picked up that stapler, and I tried to hammer in the nail. And as I was taking this stapler to try to hammer in a nail, I was hitting the nail, but I was damaging the wall at the same time. See, see th- this, is, this is what many of us, how many of us are operating. Many of us are operating in a way that we are misunderstanding our purpose so much so that we are making progress in one area, but because we don't understand our purpose, we're doing damage in another. And so when we understand our purpose, we understand, uh, we, and we, we become more efficient in the way that God wants to use us. And so Hebrews 12 and verse 1 says that, uh, that we should lay aside every sin and weight that easily besets us and run the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Isn't that what it says? 
And so what the writer of Hebrews is teaching us is that the things that throw us off course is not just sin. Right? It's not just sin, but it's weight. And, and oftentimes the weight that some of us carry is the weight that we were never intended to. All right, so we end up carrying an unnecessary load. We end up carrying something that we were never meant to. In, in other words, we're helping out people that we were never meant to help out. We are, we're trying to fix things that we were never meant to fix. Can I free somebody today? And also, can I free your finances? I want you to know that everyone is not your assignment. See, you, you're like, if, you, if you're like me and you have a generous heart, and if you have it in your pocket, you'll give it to everybody who's in need. But some kind of way, God needs to work on our hearts and let us know everyone is not your assignment. I can't be the one getting up and working and sweating and, and doing all I have to do, and you're not doing it, and I just take care of you. See, and the reason why some of us, not all of us, and sometimes we have to do it, sometimes we have to do it, but the reason why some of us don't have anything left for ourselves is because we're being generous, but we're not being responsible with our generosity. Look at somebody and say, not everyone is your assignment. See, but how do we, how do we discover this purpose? I want you to know today, I want you to write this down. Our purpose is progressively discovered. It's discovered in stages. It's, it's discovered as we walk with Jesus. He says, that we run this race that's set before us, but our goal is looking at Jesus. See, we find our purpose in him. See, we find our purpose. We find everything that we need all wrapped up inside of Jesus. And so uh, the reason why we pursue our faith the way that we pursue our faith uh, is not so that we can be financially set. It's not so that, you know, we can have more money. That's not why we pursue our faith. But I want you to know that in pursuing your faith, God will teach you the principles necessary in order to be a better money manager, in order to be a better steward over resources, in order to be a better spouse, in order to be a, a better business person. See, that's what, that is, the, uh, that is the benefit of serving Jesus because he teaches us everything that we need to know. See, that's why the scripture tells us, and I want you to receive this, he says that he gives us all things that pertain to life and godliness. In fact, I need you to put your hand on your chest and say, I have everything that I need to be successful. Everything, everything that I need to be successful. God has given it to you by right of your salvation. And so when you have Jesus, you have everything that you need. Because the Holy Spirit comes to be your, your teacher, comes to be your guide. The Holy Spirit is not just to make us jump and shout and speak in tongues. That's all good and that's all great. But the Holy Spirit, sometimes the Holy Spirit should convict us about our habits. The Holy Spirit sometimes should, should, uh, should follow us into that restaurant and say, hold on a second, don't get that steak. Maybe you should just get that, 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 that appetizer. See, that, see, that's what the Holy Ghost ought to do in your life. That's what the Holy Ghost ought to do. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost ought to convict some of us of how we are managing our resources and how we are managing our purpose. And so, <laughs> don't get dessert. I love that. <laughs> and, and, so, and so, let me tell you another way how we, we, we can discover our purpose because some people might be asking me, Pastor, what are you talking about discovering my purpose? How would I discover my purpose? I know that my, uh, not, not walking in my purpose might be delaying my process, but how do I know this? See, I want you to understand today that, uh, that sometimes the source of uh, the place that you're greatest frustrated is the place that God has put purpose in you. The place where you're most frustrated is the, is the place where God has purpose for you uh, to be a solution. And, and see, uh, this is why we can't just be a people that uh, uh, complain about everything, point out everybody's faults, uh, and we can, t we can tell you, uh, we can tell you everybody's, um, uh, everybody's uh, shortcomings. Uh, but I want you to know today that could it be that the place where you are frustrated, the place that you have the most confusion, the place that you have the most questions, uh, is that very place that God is calling you to be a solution. 
See, how do I know this? Because the Bible says that when God called Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1, yeah, he says uh, that I've called you to, uh, to tear down, to build up, uh, and to set some things in place. Uh, and so your prophetic assignment uh, is to provide solutions uh, to the world. Uh, in fact, uh, I, I believe I want to bring our church up to a level of maturity uh, that we're not just asking God for answers, uh, but you're asking God, Lord, make me an answer. In fact, I need you to lift your hands to heaven and say, Lord, make me an answer. Make me an answer. Uh, because uh, when you become an answer to a problem, I want you to know that resources, uh, money, and favor, it flows. It flows to answers. It flows to solutions. So many of us are wondering why we can't break through. Because you have not found a, an answer. Rather, you have not found a question that you can become an answer to. Is this okay teaching this morning? The, the, the third thing, the third reason why we have holes in our pocket is, is because, and here's a good one, because of our mismanagement of time. I felt that one. Our mismanagement of time. Listen, time, unlike many things in the world, water and gasoline and, you know, agriculture, unlike those things, Time is not a renewable resource. You can't plant time and get it back. You can't refresh time and recycle time. Once time comes and you use it in a good way or bad way, it's gone. And so God gives each and every one of us 168 hours per week but it's up to us. It's up to us how we steward them. Truth of the matter is, some of us, when we look back at our week, we've been sleeping for more than half of those 168 hours. We've been on Facebook for about 50 of those hours. How are you stewarding your, your time? It's not a renewable resource. And see, uh, uh, Solomon tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes that there's a time for everything. There's a time to plant. There's a time to harvest. There's a, a time to live. There's a time to die. I, I, in other words, every time has its season, and every season has its purpose. And what many of us are trying to do is we're trying to, uh, we're trying to, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're not managing those seasons right. And, and so uh, when the time of harvest comes, uh, we're wondering what's going on. But the reason why your harvest is scarce is because the time where you should have been sowing, you've mismanaged that time. Is this making sense? And so, uh, I want you to write this down. We overestimate what we can accomplish in a day, but we underestimate what we can accomplish in one month. See, many of us, and I put myself in this category, we will, we will set an alarm clock because, you know, we just... What, listen to this podcast, I read this book, and now we're motivated. We set our alarm clock at 5 a.m., and we say that we're going to get up and we're going to make it happen. We're going we're gonna to read, we're going to do our devotion, and we're going to work out. That 5 a.m. time comes, and we say that, you know, we're going to have this great day, and that 5 a.m. time comes, right? We just hit that snooze button. We just, we just hit it. Your 6 o'clock comes, we got, we got another half an hour before we can get up to, to go to work. And then the day that we had planned in our mind that we're going to have this great day, we overestimated it because of our, our, our lack of commitment, our schedule, whatever the case is. We overestimated what we can do in a day. But some of us, after a month hits, we look back and we say that, you know what, only if we, maybe if I didn't get up at 5 a.m. or I did something a little bit more consistent at a more manageable time, if I did those things daily, I would have been so much further by now. See, many of us don't recognize if we were just consistent over time, 
we'd be further rather than trying to, uh, rather than trying to, uh, uh, you know, have this, this stellar day that, you know, that you, can, that you can follow you on your Instagram stories and how productive your day is. See, many of us, we don't recognize that what we're doing, we're doing more of a disservice to ourselves because we're not taking advantage of the moments with which God has given us. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32, uh, as, as, they were, as they were numbering the people of God, uh, as they were taking the census, uh, the Bible says they came down to a tribe of people, a tribe of people called uh, the sons of Issachar, the tribe of Issachar. And so the Bible says about the tribe of Issachar uh, that, they, that they, didn't, they, they didn't have, uh, uh, they weren't blacksmiths, they weren't warriors, uh, uh, they weren't scientists, they, they, weren't, they, didn't, they didn't have all those skills. But the Bible says about these sons of Issachar that they knew the times. They knew the times, not only did they know the times, but they knew what they should do with the times. My, my prayer for us in this season is that we would recognize, first of all, the season that we are in and that we would take deliberate and intentional steps to maximize every moment that God has given us. Because how many of you know time is money? Okay, only three of you know that time is money. Look, look, see, that, that's one thing uh, about this season of my life, that my increased responsibilities with my family, uh, professionally, and with the ministry, I recognize that, look, in, in some cases, if it's not paying me, it might not just be financially, but if it's not paying me, if it's not worth it, I'm not doing it. I promise you I'm not. Because time, th- I, thank you, Ashton in the back. Because time is money. But some people say that, but they don't recognize that. The time is money. Who has a dollar bill in, the, in, their, in their hand? I forgot to grab some cash this morning. Anybody, who has some money? Anything. $20, $50, $100, who has one? I want to show you how time is money. All right. All right, here. How much do we got? All right, we got, we got $11. All right, how much you got? How much you got? doesn't matter. Look at him. He's asking if I want big money or what? Give me the biggest one you got. Time is money. Time is money. Oh, oh, oh. I should be receiving an offering from you today. Time is money. I want to show you how time is money. Time is money. Jonathan, stand up for me. See, this is why I, I really don't think that we recognize that we're mismanaging our time. Because, Jonathan, let's say you work for me, okay? You've been working hard, and let's say, let's say your hourly rate, how much money do I have? Let's just make it easy, and let's just make the $60, okay? <laughs> That's okay. So let's say you work for me for two hours. Two hours, okay? So let's do the math. $60. How much, how much per hour is this time worth? $30 an hour. Okay, you worked hard for me for two hours. Jonathan, here's your paycheck. All right. So Jonathan says, thank you, God bless you. But as soon as I give Jonathan the money for his time, Jonathan gets up and he sees that that nice phone. Shania, stand up. And he says, you know what? That phone is $60. I have $60. And as soon as I give him the money, he goes and buys the phone for $60. I want you to stop right there because... You think that he spent $60 on that phone. You know what he really spent, Thane? He spent two hours of his life on that phone. And see, that's what many of us don't realize. See, if we think about our money that way, if we think about our, the value of our time that way, some of us, we wouldn't spend certain things, certain, we wouldn't spend certain amounts of money on things because we're recognizing what we're really giving up is our time. Is, that, is this making sense to somebody? You can, you can give the money back. Look, don't worry. We'll receive it later in the offering. Amen, amen, amen. amen. I think that $10 was. was. So that's what, that's what we're giving up. And so that's what we don't realize while we're putting holes in our pocket because we're throwing away our time. All that, oh, listen, commuting in this Toronto traffic. Look, dear, look, right? I, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, that's really what we're spending. 
Many of us don't realize that the reason why we have holes in our pocket is because we only have a limited amount of time. We only get a limited amount of hours at work. So it's not just as easy as, you know, picking up another shift or what, what we're giving away is our time. And uh, this is what Haggai is saying, that you're, you're taking all, this, all these wages, you're planting all these seeds, and what you're bringing in, what you're feeling like you're bringing in is nothing. But what's really happening is that you're mismanaging your time. So, so how, do we, how do we fix this? How do we fix this? I got five minutes to get to this. How do we fix this? How, how, do, we, how, do, we, how do we secure the holes in our pocket? How do, we, how do we secure the bag? How do we consider our ways? Number one, this is what we need to do. Is we need to, I know this is simple, but we need to obey the word of God. I know this is simple. Obey God. Look at somebody and say, obey God. Obey, God. obey the word of God. See, Haggai was, was saying that, that this is what you all say. You all say that it's not time to build the house of the Lord. Right? You all say that, you know, I'm, I'm going to get to it later. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what God wants me to do later. But God says, how long are you going to dwell in your house where your house is all fixed up? All right? And the house of God lies in ruins. And, and look, this is not me trying to say we get, we're doing a building fund, although I might preach this again when we do need to have a building fund. But what God, the temple that God wants to build is not just a physical temple. God wants to build a spiritual temple. He wants, he wants to build the church, and the church is not the building. You are the church. And so he's saying that how are you going to be successful in temporal things when you're not even giving attention to spiritual things. And so we have to obey God. The word of God is filled with covenant promises. Covenant promises. See, that's important. Not just promises. Somebody say covenant promises. See, co covenant promises means that, that, there is a, that there is two sides of this promise. That God promises to do something for you, but you got to promise to do something for him. See, one of, one of my friends posted on, on, one of his, on one of his stories. I thought it was so profound. I guess at this church, they, 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 um, you know, he, went to, he, re, he responded to an altar call, and, uh, you know, it, it was about, um, you know, it, what you're experiencing in life is, is not what, you know, you felt that God promised you. And, and you know, he was saying in, in, his, uh, in his post, he said that he went to the altar and said, Lord, this is not what you promised. And he said the Holy Ghost spoke back to him and said that this is not what, I promis this, this is not what you promised either. Isn't that something? That we, we, we want God to fulfill his promises, but we're not willing to fulfill ours. See, Deuteronomy chapter 28 is a, is a chapter that many Many people, especially in charismatic and evangelical circles, we quote that you will be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed in your going out, blessed in your coming in, and we shout about it, and we throw offerings on the altar when we hear it. But you know what it says? It says, you will have all these blessings if you keep my commandments. He says, he says all of this will be yours. In fact, the Bible says, no good thing will I withhold from them that do what? Walk uprightly. No, no good thing. I, I'm, I'm not going to withhold anything. In fact, everything is yours, but it's a part of the covenant, right? But he says, right after that, but he says, look, if you don't fulfill this, then all of the things that should be blessings are actually going to turn into curses, and so we have the responsibility then to uh, intentionally, um, uh, intentionally come in covenant with the promises of God. See, God's word, it gives, us, it gives us vision for living. Somebody write that down. God's word gives us vision for living. Psalm chapter 119, verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet, and it's a light to my path. That means everything that we need everything that we require, everything that we need in order to become better stewards, become better managers, is actually in the word of God. And, it, and, it's, and it's our guide for living. It's our guide for living. Uh, but what we need to end up, what we need to do in response is that we need to reconcile our belief with our behavior. 
right? We, we can't say we believe something and not do the thing that we say that we believe. Did, does that make sense, what I just said? We can't believe something and then not do the thing that we say that we believe. Because we can do things and not believe them, but you can't believe something and not do it. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? James says, show me a man that has faith, and I'll show you somebody who's working. I'll show you somebody who believes it. They'll come in covenant with that promise that they're going to act according to what God said. And so when Abraham, when Abraham believed God that God was, going to, uh, was God was going to preserve his seed and so that he would be a father of many nations, he knew that even if he went up to the mountain and killed Isaac, uh, that God would raise him up. And so he was, uh, he was resolute uh, and his actions and behavior, uh, it was in line with what he believed. He went up that mountain with no other options, with no contingency, uh, with no plan. All he had was a word from the Lord. And I need you to look at your neighbor and say, if a word is all you have, a word is all you need. Come on, talk to the person beside you. If a word is all you have, then a word is all you need. Because as he went up the side of the mountain, according to the instructions of the Lord, I feel like preaching, but I don't want to do this today. As he went up one side of the mountain, according to the word of the Lord, the Bible says that there was a ram that was on the top of that mountain. And I want you to know that rams, they don't climb up mountains. But I want you to know that when you obey God coming up this side of the mountain, I want to let somebody know your provision is coming up the is coming up the other side. And when you obey God, you will see that he is a provider. When you obey God, you will see that he will give you everything that you need for your assignment. So it's our vision for living. So Psalm chapter 1 says, uh, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in that law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water, which will bring forth fruit in its season, and whatsoever he does, it shall prosper. And so what the word of God is telling us is that the one who meditates on the word, prosperity is a guarantee. The one who meditates on the word of God shall prosper. I'm not talking about the one that uses the word to prosper. I'm not talking about the one that manipulates the word to get what they want. I'm talking about the one who meditates on the word of God shall prosper in all of his ways. And whatsoever he does uh, will remain. So I want you to be reminded today that what, what you have, it, it does not change the word of God. It does not change the word of God. What we have in our, in our, in our current circumstances, uh, what we are experiencing, uh, what's in our bank balance, it does not change the word of God that he's a provider. But I want you to know that when we come in line by faith to the word of God, what he says, it will change what we have. Can I get an amen from somebody here today? It will change what you have. And so third, secondly, how do we repair the holes? How do we repair the holes? We, 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 we intentionally, we intentionally worship the Lord. I'm talking about worship with intentions. See, there's a difference between the intensity of worship and the intentionality of worship. Because some of us think that Worship is just a slow song. Praise is a fast song. That's just, that's just the intensity of worship, how loud we are and how demonstrative we are. But worship is also a function of our intentions. Look at somebody and say, you have to be intentional. You have to be intentional. Jesus met, Jesus met this woman at, at Jacob's well and said, the father is, is seeking is seeking a certain type of worshiper. This type of worshiper, and let me free some people that don't think that they're musically gifted, they can't sing or can't play an instrument. The, 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 the father says he's looking for a certain type of worshiper. It's not, 
not because you can sing. I'm looking for a worshiper that worships me in what? In spirit, in other words, in a place where he's connected to the heart of God. And truth, meaning that he's intentionally going after the hidden secrets, the, 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 the places uh, uh, of God where, you know, you, you get to see the, the light of his glory. I'm talking about those who, are, who worship him in, in, in an intentional way, that go up the mountain in an intentional way. See, what worship does, worship creates a pathway for God to work on our behalf. That's what worship does. See, that's why when I tell you to lift your hands, it's, it's not just so that we can create an atmosphere. It's not so that we can get photos. When we say to worship the Lord or lift your hands in worship, what we're doing is that we are, we are making way for God to work on our behalf. In, in the book of Second Chronicles, and we're going to get back to Haggai. I didn't forget about it. In the book of 2 Chronicles, the Bible says that uh, the king of Judah was, uh, was outnumbered by three Moabite kings, him and his army. But you know what? You know what the Holy Spirit said to that king? He said, you know what I want you to do? I want you to send Judah first. Before you pick up your weapons, before you draw your battle plans, I want you to send Judah, send them with the, the horns, send them with the shofar, Send them first and see what happens. See, the Bible says that when they sent forth praise first, when they sent forth worship first, the Bible says that all of the armies that were around them, it says God sent ambushments against them, and they begin to destroy themselves. So I want you to understand today that when we worship the Lord first, when we worship the Lord first, that means we give him an opportunity to fight our battles. We give him an opportunity to go before us and to do the things that we cannot do. To fight the battles that we cannot fight. To make ways that we cannot make. To provide for things that we don't have the ability nor the capacity to. I don't know about you, but, but there are some things that, that are in front of me right now that I don't have the ability, but I'm still worshiping God. I'm still worshiping God. I'm saying like Job, though he slays me, yet will I trust him. And even if the Lord gives, and even if he takes away, in spite of that, blessed be the name of the Lord. Just for about 10 seconds, can we just offer worship just really quickly? In spite of what we are going through right now, I, I want to create a pathway for God to work for you this week. I want to create a pathway for God to work for you this week, to work in your finances, to work in your marriage, to work on your home, to work on your mind. Go before us. Father, we're sending Judah first. Create, create an environment, oh God, that we can walk into victory. God, this is our desire. This is our desire. So the intentions of our worship, the intentions of our worship. Can you all give me about five more minutes? The intentions of our worship, I need you to write these down. Intentions of our worship involves our motives. What's our motive? Our motives are not what we can get. Our motives is the glory of God. Haggai said that I'm, I'm doing all of this so that God is glorified. So the question is, why are you worshiping? It involves our mind. What are you thinking? What are you thinking as you worship the Lord? It involves our mannerisms. What are you doing? Are we, are we giving more at the Raptors game than we're giving more to God? Do we, do we have the, you know, I, I went to, I remember one time for the first time, I went to a, uh, I went to a, a, a Maple Leaf game during the playoffs. I've never been to a hockey game in my life. This was another thing I was exposed to when I was down on Bay Street. And I could not believe the people who are so conservative. These guys were jumping and shouting and high-fiving people that they didn't know. But now when we come, you bring those same people to church, and they look at us high-fiving each other and they say it doesn't take all that. So you're telling me that 
I'm cheering for some people skating around on the ice. As entertaining as it is, those people are doing nothing for me. But for the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, who stepped on the battlefield to win the, the victory over death, hell, and the grave, I owe him a better praise than that. Come on, somebody give God a better praise than you would give LeBron, that you would give Steph Curry, that you would give any, give him a. So it's, 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 it's what are you doing? It also involves our mouth. What are you saying? It involves our magnification. What are you expecting? When you magnify something, you are making it, you're making it big. You're making it, you're making it larger. The scripture says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt him together. See, the reason why David was saying that, you all hear me talk about this often. David was in, was hiding in a cave while he wrote those words. He was hiding in a cave away from his palace, running away from his blood son that was trying to kill him. But then he said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. So that deals with our expectation because what we're doing when we magnify something, we're making it big. That's what we're doing. We are making it big when we magnify it. So, so what David was doing in the midst of what he was going through, he was enlarging God, making it bigger than his circumstance. Can I tell somebody today that our God is bigger than any lack or any insufficiency that we may be experiencing? Our God is bigger than it, and you have the responsibility to mag magnify it. What are you expecting? Worship also involves a metamorphosis. It involves a change. After you have worshipped, after you have given the Lord the fruit of your lips, after you have sacrificed to him, how is your life changing? Are we going to be guilty of, of what the word says, that we draw nigh with our lips, but our hearts are far from him? You know, we all have the tendency of doing that. Come on, don't leave me out here by myself. We'll cry and, we'll cry and do all this stuff in church but we have no intentions of making any changes in our lives. We'll go to the altar and foam at the mouth, and then we'll go to doing that same thing, the same thing that the Holy Spirit is convicting us of. Can I tell you something? Your worship has more to do with what you do after the sacrifice than, you do, than it does with what you've done before it. And so after you lay down a sacrifice, when it's a sacrifice, you can't just go back and get it. But you know it's worship when something gets cut, when something dies. That means you have to walk away and leave it on the altar. Finally, worship has to do with this. Worship has to do with your money. Money is worship. I'm telling you. How you manage your money is worship. How you it's, it's, it's not about how much you give in offerings. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. But how you manage your money is worship. Because could it be that God wants to use you, use your resources in order to bless the life of someone or in order to give you enough time so that you can focus on the right things? God can use your resources, but the truth of the matter is many of us, we're not released to do what God called us to do because of our financial constraints. Look, I can tell you that for myself. There are some things that I could be doing a whole lot more if I didn't have to worry about how much the next paycheck is going to be. Is there anybody else? There's a whole lot more I could be doing. There's a whole lot more people I could be reaching. There's a whole lot. I can spend a whole lot more time with my wife, my, my children, if I wasn't worried about the next paycheck. But let me tell you something. The reason why money, your money is worship is because that frees you to do and to be what God called you to do and to do what God called you to do. And so here's the final thing. This is how we, we mend the holes in our pockets. So we said that we have to worship, we have to obey God. The final thing is we have a responsibility to give. It's a responsibility. Haggai says that how are you going to 
take care of yourself, and then leave God's business in ruins. I can tell you, I am living witness. I am living witness that if you take care of God's business, God will take care of yours. I'm living witness. See, it's how we, it's how we take care of the house of God. I'm not talking about the building, but it's how we take care of the ministry, how we take care of uh, how God wants to, uh, uh, how God wants to uh, 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 use us in the earth. That matters. And I want you to know, according to Luke chapter 6 and verse 38, it says that we only reap according to what we sow. Paul says in Romans, don't be mocked. God, God won't be mocked, excuse me. Don't be deceived. God will not be mocked. Whatever you sow, that is what you're going to reap. So we're, we're asking God, where's our financial breakthrough? But God says, where was your seed? You want people to be generous to you. Where was your generosity? He says, how are you, how, how you going to be out here? How are you going to be out here driving a new car and doing all that while, while spiritual things are not even being taken care of? You're worried about the newest Birkin bag and going to Dubai and all this. Look, I want you to have all that stuff. I do. But I want you to put it in proper priorities. And I want you to know that giving is not just financial. See, a part, a part of our core values here at this church, many of you might need to go through a um, growth track to go through all this again, but we want to be generous in our time, talent, and resources. And so giving is not just, not just money. Giving to God is not just taking out of your bank account and putting it into the church's bank account. Giving is, how, how are you giving your time? Look there's, look, there's things that we need to do as a ministry that we, we need more than money to get it done. Can I tell you? You'll hear from Dwayne probably in the next week or two. But we need to clean up the, we need to clean up the lot in the church. Money's not going to fix that. We need, some, we need people's time. You know, you might have to dedicate, uh, I don't know, Dwayne will let us know, a Saturday morning or Sunday after church, I don't know. We... We, that's what we need. How, how, how are we going to just be taking care of our own house and we come and look at the church and it's, how are we going to put everything in place in our own house? But when it comes to the business of God, we just watch it crumble. See, I don't think you realize that what God said in the prophecy of Haggai, he said, the reason why you're not fruitful and the reason why your livestock is not bringing forth labor into your hands he says, here it is. Where is it? Uh, I think it's verse 10. Verse 11. Ashton, can you put that up for me? Verse 11, Haggai chapter 1. I want you to understand, because some of us think that it's the enemy. It's the enemy that's holding up our finances. Haggai 1, 11. He says, who called the drought? He says, I called the drought. He says, I'm trying to get your attention here. He says, the reason why it could be that you're not prospering in this season is because I can't trust you with it. He's saying to many of us, consider your ways. Consider your ways that you're not giving to Starbucks and Chick-fil-A and Moxie's and I don't know, where are we going to lunch after church? <laughs> consider we're not giving what we should be giving to God, to them. So I'm reminded of this and we're finished. In uh, 1 Kings chapter 18, the Bible says that Elijah was facing off against the 450 prophets of Baal. Both of them had the same sacrifice, the same altar, but the only difference between the two prophetic camps is one was sacrificing to a false god and one was sacrificing to the God of the universe. The Bible says the prophets of Baal, they screamed at the top of their lungs, they cut themselves, they did all types of stuff. But that God that they were offering that sacrifice to did nothing for them. 
When was the last time that, uh, that Starbucks, when was the last time that, you know, he called you to check on you? Ask how you're doing and, and, and prayed for you. When, when was the last time that, you know, you, you spent money on that bag and that bag comforted you when you were, you had tears in your eyes? When was the last time, when was the last time that that new device, when was that last time that that new device uh, uh, encouraged you in the time of your need? See, this is, this is, what, this is what our generation has become. We, we, we buy something that we have consumed, and rather than it serving us, we're still making payments on it. Isn't that crazy? We bought dinner last week. Bria, we bought dinner last week, and we're still paying for it on a credit card at the end of the year. Right. So, so here's the difference. Here's the difference. It's the same sacrifice, same seed. The difference is who you're giving it to. But God is saying that if you, if you put it where it's supposed to be, I'm not talking about lining people's pockets or building edifice. I'm not talking about any of that. He says, if you put it where it's supposed to be, he says, I am going to cause. I'm going to cause things to fall in place so that the thing that you've been working hard for, that you're going to keep it in your pocket, that you're not going to look back and say, where did all this go? But all of that is for the purpose that God is glorified. Let's stand today. I'm telling you, Kanye said it prophetically in 27 to 2007. He said, wait till I get my money right. Look. Wait till I get, wait. Listen, I, I, look, I, I, when I'm talking about getting my money right, I'm not talking about having a million dollar ba uh, bank balance. I'm talking about getting things in proper order, proper priority. That when there's an emergency, I'm, my mind is not going crazy trying to figure out where that money's coming from. I'm talking about getting my money right, that if something ever happens to me, that my wife and my children don't have to sell our house just to bury me. I'm talking about, get, look at somebody and say, wait till I get my money right. Wait till I get my money right. And, and so it's our responsibility as a church then, not just to ask you for the 10th and not teach you how to manage the 90th. I can't, take, I can't take an offering from you and then not give you tools, resources to manage what God has given you. Because when we give our tithes, when we sow our seeds, what we're doing, we're consecrating the rest. That's what we're doing. We're setting the rest apart and we're saying, Lord, all of this is yours. I'm acknowledging you at this. Bless the rest. And so this is what we're believing that God is going to do, uh, not just in this month, but in the rest of of our lives but we have to consider our ways consider our ways and Lord I pray today that for many of us that may be in a in a in a season like this where we just can't we just can't get a handle on on our money we can't get a handle on our budget I pray Lord would you give us the grace of divine priorities would you allow us, Lord, to, to break through those barriers of, of limited thinking, break through those barriers of mismanaged time? Lord, uh, allow us to discover our purpose, Lord, so that we can obey your word, so that we can worship you with intentionality, and so, Lord, that we can, we can give you what you require of us. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that, that wherever that there has, been, there has been a leak in our ship, God, I thank you that your Holy Spirit comes to seal it. Lord, and I thank you, Lord, that you're keeping us afloat and you would allow us to sail to our destination. Father, I thank you today that as your house, as your spiritual house gets raised, Father, raise us with it. Lord, as, 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 as your house uh, is, is, is growing in glory and, and your house is growing and reaching the world, Father, I pray, Lord God, would you also build us up. Build us up as your spiritual house that 
you would use us to ultimately bring you glory. Lord, it's in Jesus' name that we have prayed and we thank you for what you will do. Amen. Amen. Listen, we're going to worship the Lord with our giving today. We're going to worship God with our giving. Listen, as much as I've talked about giving and finances today, don't feel that I'm manipulating any more money out of you. Please. I'm not. I'm not. That's not my intention. My intention is to do all of this, not to get it from you. But look at somebody and say, this is for you. This is, this is for you. I'm, look, when we sow, it's, 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 not, it's not just for the church. The Bible says God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And so when we sow, we are sowing for what God is doing in our house. That's what we're sowing for. We're believing that he's going to return our seeds 30, 60, 100 fold. That he's going to rebuke the devourer for our sake. And so that he is going to sow up the holes in the pockets. And so I want us to sow with that understanding today that if we take care of God's business, God's going to take care of ours. And so if you need an envelope this morning, I want you to raise your hands. Our CSW is going to get one to you. If you're online today, I'm encouraging you, get in this offering. Don't log off right now. This is not the time to log off. You need to plant a seed in this anointing. We have a debit terminal. You can sow by PayPal. You can go to ramptoronto.com forward slash give e-transfer at uh, give at ramptoronto.com or you can give cash any way that you give we appreciate it because everything goes into us being able to do the work of ministry and so as we have the offering prepared I want us to put it in our right hands we put it in our right hands because we're saying to God we're giving what's right and not what's left let's repeat our declaration together I am a generous giver because I serve a generous God I have no fear of lack because he supplies all of my needs I expect increase open doors and advancement in every area of my life with this seed my family is blessed my home is protected my body is healed and my harvest is secured in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, while we worship, let's sow. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, church. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God this morning for he is great. He's greatly to be praised. So we offer our worship to him this morning. Mm, the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. Oh, yeah, I will wait on you, and I will trust in you. We trust you with our resources today, God. I will trust in you. Sing the Lord is. The Lord is my Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Sing the Lord is, the Lord is my, is my light and sound. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Sing, I, I will, I will wait on. Come on, if you're waiting on the Lord, just raise your hands in this place. Sing, I will wait on you, and I will trust in you, Lord. We trust in you, Jesus. We trust in you. Trust in you. Sing, I will remain. I will remain confident in confident this that we will see I'll your see goodness, the goodness, goodness of the Lord. Sing, I will remain. I will remain confident in confident this. In this that I will see. The goodness of the Lord. Sing, the Lord is. The Lord is my 
He's my light and sound. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Sing the Lord is. Oh, yeah. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait. We wait on you, Jesus. I will wait. Oh, and while we wait, we will trust in you, Lord. We trust your will in your way. Come on, church, let's sing this part out. Sing, I will remain confident in this. Come on, we're confident in our God today. The goodness of the Lord. Sing, I will remain confident in this one thing. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Come on, if you're confident in our God, come on, just clap your hands with us. Hallelujah. As we wait on the Lord, hallelujah, we know that he is working on our behalf today. Thank you, Jesus. How many believe that today? He's working for us. He's working on our behalf. Thank you, Jesus. So we trust in no other today. Yeah. And we'll sing this together today. We say we set our hope on you, Jesus. You are the everlasting God. Oh, yeah. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. We set our hope on you. On you, we set our hope. We set our hope on the one who is the God. You are God. Come on, sing it loud, church. Oh, we set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one. Who is the everlasting God? Oh, you are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting. We set our hope on you. We set our yeah, yeah, yeah. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. Yeah, yeah. You are the everlasting God. you are the you are the we set our hope on you sing it church we set our hope on your love we set our hope on the you are the everlasting God. you are the everlasting God. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Can we sing that one more time? So I will remain. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Can we clap our hands this morning and give God praise if you're confident that you will see the hand of the Lord in your life. And so I want to remind you this Saturday, it's this Saturday, right? This Saturday? Not th this Saturday. This Saturday coming. This Saturday we're going to have our financial planning seminar so we're not just going to take the the 10th and not teach you how to manage the 90th. And so we have a financial advisor coming this Saturday, April the 20th at 2 p.m. His name is Randy Reed. He's a friend of mine. And so he's going to give us great financial tools and tips and resources and how to manage what it is and to protect what God has 
uh, given us. And so I'm encouraging you to come out. Uh, I'm also encouraging you to invite your friends and family. Uh, it's a free seminar, so we're going to just come and get some uh, insight into how we can plan out our financial future. Amen. How many people think that they can benefit from something like that? Amen. Amen. And so let's come out this, uh, this Saturday at 2 p.m. and let's have a great time in the presence of the Lord. As well, uh, Bible study this Wednesday. We're going to have a great time. We're going to start something new. We finished the book of Philippians after about seven weeks. And so I really had a great time teaching it verse by verse and word by word. And so we're going to go into another book and we're going to do the same thing. Is that okay? Amen. Amen. Now may the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God our Father and the fellowship of His Spirit, the Comforter, let it rest, remain, and abide with us all, and let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great Sunday, everybody. We'll see you on Wednesday and on Saturday for the financial seminar. God bless you.